Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice rational equation. We have x equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Don't be confused. This is not an infinite fraction, even though we may turn it into 1. So we have the following equation. How do we solve for that? For these kinds of equations, you have to be very careful uh, not to make the denominator 0. So we're going to talk about the domain, okay? For example, 1 over x is undefined if x is 0, so that means x should not equal 0. So that's something to think about. But that's not the only thing. 1 plus 1 over x should not be 0 either, which means... 1 over x should not be negative 1, which means x should not be negative 1 either. So there is a lot of limitations we need to be careful about. Obviously, when you solve for x, you're going to see what the x values are, and you can always go back to this. And then is there any other conditions? I don't think so. Uh, under these conditions, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. So how do you solve something like this? The typical answer is, why not make a common denominator? So let's rewrite it. x equals... 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by x here. So we're going to multiply by x and multiply by x. That's pretty much the same thing as making a common denominator. Uh, this will be a little easier. We're going to get x plus 1. And then uh, here, if you want, again, you can multiply by x plus 1 or make a common denominator. Same idea. And we can just distribute. And when we distribute x plus 1, you know, it's going to cancel out here and here. So we're going to get x times x plus 1 equals x plus 1. When you multiply by 1, you get that. And then x plus 1 cancels out, and we end up with x. You see, it's a lot easier than dealing with uh, denominators. This gives us x squared plus x, and this is 2x plus 1. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Now, you should be familiar with this equation, especially if you dealt with Fibonacci series, golden ratio, and stuff like that before. Does that look familiar? Hopefully. So this has to do with golden ratio because you can easily set up uh, a unit length and then kind of split it up into two pieces such that the ratio of the larger piece to the whole thing is the same thing as the smaller piece to the larger piece. Make sense? That's where the golden ratio comes from. But anyways, let's go ahead and solve this equation by using the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 1 plus 4, and that would be a 5. So this would be 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Does that make sense? Does that look familiar? I uh, Hopefully. So there are two values, but I mean, do they both work? Uh, can we guarantee? Well, we kind of need to plug it in because we did a lot of multiplying. Obviously, none of these values are going to be 0 or negative 1, so we're good in that sense. But it's probably better to still check our work. And we can do that with one of these. How about using the minus sign? Because the plus sign is probably going to work. If you replace x with that, I'm going to do it on the left-hand side. So let's replace x with 1 minus root 5 over. By the way, the reciprocal of x uh, in this case would be 2 over 1 minus root 5. And if you multiply by 1 plus root 5, top and bottom, you're going to get something like this. 2 times 1 plus root 5, and the product of these two things is going to be 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. And then when you divide, you're going to get a negative 2 at the bottom, which you can write as negative 1 minus root 5 over 2. That's going to be 1 over x, and you need to add 1 to it. So that's going to just bring in a 2 here. 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's going to give us 1 minus root 5 over 2 after the addition of 1. And I need to do the reciprocal again and add 1. Notice that we're pretty much doing the same thing over and over. And yes, this is going to work at the end. You can go ahead and test out 1 plus root 5 over 2. That's pretty easy. Very, very similar to this. But let's go ahead and look at other approaches. For example, I don't know if you want to call this second method or something else, but here's another approach. Remember, I was telling you at the very beginning, even though this is not an infinite continued fraction, we can make it. How? Well, take a look at this. This expression contains itself, right? The whole thing is called x, but then we see x again. So this x could be replaced with this. Does that make sense? Let's do it. 
It's fun. X equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over. And now this X will be replaced with this, which is 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over X. You get the idea? So if you continue doing this, you're going to get something interesting at the end. You're going to get something like this. X equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over so on and so forth. And as you know, if you call this X, right, again, the same idea, but this time we can actually call a bigger piece X, which is interesting. And you would be getting 1 plus 1 over X and then X equals that. And by multiplying everything by X, X squared equals X plus 1 and you get the exact same equation. But guess what? This expression in its infinite form should have a single answer, right? Because that's a fixed numerical expression, even though it's infinite. I mean, you can have an infinite radical that doesn't mean that it's going to have two different answers, right? This is two for sure. You probably know that, right? And if it's A, it's A. So it has a definite answer if it converges, and this one does. And it should be the golden ratio, right? I think so. But what about the other one? And that seems to be a solution for our original equation because this, they are not the same thing. Because you, when you get an infinite fraction, that's a different story. You gotta be very careful with that. Anyways, let me just tell you the second method, which is actually the official second method, which is what I meant to do. And the other one you can call third or whatever. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and call this y, and that gives me x equals one plus one over y. But at the same time, because of this uh, naming, y equals 1 plus 1 over x. You get the idea? I'm turning my equation into a system, and this is valid as long as we don't hit negative 1 or 0, right? You know that. So what does this mean, though? This means that I can write 1 in two ways. 1 is x minus 1 over y. From the second equation, 1 is y minus 1 over x, which means these two things are equal. Because if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal, a basic principle. So here we're getting x minus 1 over y equals y minus 1 over x. I know some people are going to question this method because like you had a single variable. Why did you go from a single variable to two variables? Because this gives us a really nice system. That's why. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. x minus y plus 1 over x minus 1 over y equals 0. We can go ahead and try to make a common denominator here that would give us y minus x over xy equals 0. In order to be able to factor this, I probably need to negate the second part. So the opposite of y minus x is x minus y. So I can write it like this and then factor out an x minus y. If I factor out x minus y, I'm getting 1 minus 1 over xy. Here, notice that uh, they both have x minus y and this is 1 times that. So this means what? x minus y equals 0, which means y equals x. The second thing is 1 minus 1 over xy equals 0, which means xy equals 1, or y equals 1 over x. So we're going to consider both of these cases for the second method, 2a and 2b, or not 2b. So let's go ahead and find out what happens with this. If y is equal to x, and remember, we set y equal to 1 plus 1 over x, y equals 1 plus 1 over x, and now we're finding that y equals x, which gives us the same solutions again if you multiply everything by x, right? So the golden ratio and the reciprocal or, uh, I mean, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The, those two solutions, right? Are they both valid? That's for you to check. What, what happens with y equals 1 over x? That's a good question, right? So we have y equals 1 plus 1 over x. And now we're saying that, okay, y is equal to 1 over x, which we can set it equal to 1 over x. But here, 1 over x cancels out and you get 1 equals 0. Surprise! nonsense right that doesn't make sense so this doesn't really give us anything good so we have to stick with the same solutions let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions so we can be more confident about the number of solutions sorry i have to give it away but guess how many solutions we have at this point ready set and go Tada! those are going to be the solutions why do we have two solutions that's for you to find out again and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.